one make viewer would be so upset. Oh, we're live. That's it, mate. You make them wait. Don't you go dead on six you no. go when you feel like. You I go mean, when you're ready. Now anyway, we've stopped talking about live. very rude things. Hello, everybody. Viewers and lovely people and people watching in Catch Up and all the other people. It's DHTV time. We've got a wonderful guest for you. She's she's down there. Uh, there she is. Um, uh, and she isn't uh, a ghost. No. Whatever the lighting Definitely might say. Not a ghost. We shall introduce her in a moment after Zek has pushed the button that makes the theme push tune the happen. Button. Push, the, push button. the button. Yes, because today we are joined by the wonderful Fuchsia Carter. Say hello, Fuchsia. Hello, hello everybody. Woo! <laughs> now, we've called it Disability and Reasonable Adjustment, just because we wanted to make it sound like we were very sensible and grown up, but we already guessed <laughs> we're talking about jelly talking before, uh, before we came on air, so this is not going to be uh, a sensible show. Um, now, what I do normally, because I can't be asked to do any research, um, is I ask our guests to introduce themselves. So, Fuchsia, tell us a bit about yourself and tell us why you're here today. <laughs> Other than oh, the fact that I bent your arm for so long. Your life in reverse. So <laughs> I'm telling you my life. And oh, oh, and those who are too young to know what the, this is your life is, go and Google it. That's it. It's, oh. Yeah, exactly like this is your life in reverse. So tonight, <laughs> this is your life. Now, Fuchsia, I have no idea who you Remember that candidate that watched you on your vibrating chair? Yes, vibrating chair. We will find out more about that and, yeah. and how okay. it's a reasonable adjustment in a mo. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh my goodness right <clears throat> professional face hi everybody yes i'm fuchsia i am uh 38 years old well as of next month i live in west sussex and um for the past three years i've been working for a company called alexander man solutions rebranded to ams they are a talent acquisition uh, agency so uh, the old school recruitment agencies and i work for a global uh, corporation. Um, unfortunately, not allowed to mention who they are, but everyone I think knows by now. That's who lying, I'm lying. No, I don't know. It's lying. <laughs> no, <seriously. laughs> um, so they're my main client, but I do work with other clients. I have worked with Rolls Royce and uh, and other other companies. Um, but um, I do all adjustments and support for any disabled person who has applied and got through to interview stage with this global corporation. And I support them throughout the recruitment process. And I also support the recruiters, the hiring managers, the client, the business as a whole. I do go to fancy do's <laughs> and dinners. Um, and I also support AMS internally as well. Yeah. Uh, with so that's um, that's quite a lot. The best thing, the way I understand it is, I go into businesses and train them to be accessible and inclusive. Yeah. And you're the one but once I've trained people like your managers and stuff that the goes, Hey, we, we have that guy come in and tell us we were doing bad. We need to do better. Go to future. She knows what we need to do. And then you get it all done. Basically. Well, I like to think I do. Yeah. Sometimes it falls flat on the face, but you know, <laughs> companies are trying their hardest, aren't they? And that's all you can have our ass off. Some, 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 yeah. some are, some are, some are, some are, some are, some are. I think because I mean, it's a dodgy one, isn't it? Cause like, obviously I work, uh, Zek doesn't, unfortunately, at the moment. I'm lazy. And, uh, yeah, no, exactly what most people think. Wrong. But the idea that, um, that disabled people either all don't work yeah, or all can't work is kind of something I spend a lot of time <laughs> talking about in meetings and training and stuff. And um, I, kind of, I mean, do you get that a lot, you know, when you started especially the idea that you know it yeah. was going to be difficult to get disabled people in the workplace oh like you wouldn't believe <laughs> the business was constantly pushing back not ams but my client mm. Mm. was constantly pushing back going oh well we understand why you're here because we needed you to be here because we had an audit and it wasn't so great and mm. obviously we want to be under the disability confidence scheme and be a disability employer and all this and other and they were like, um, you need to start tracking how many people mm. you're yeah. going through. And in my, f I was only working 12 hours a week when I first started, because I was still on ESA. I wasn't too sure mm. my body could handle. I'd been out of eight 
uh, work for eight years at this yeah. point. And I was very, very poorly. I'd just come out of homelessness. So I wasn't mentally very well either. Um, and it grew to 16 hours and then 16 hours to 27 hours and then 27 hours to full time, which is 32 yeah. hours. Yeah. Um, in the first year, I think I only talked to... <sighs> I'd like to say 2,000 people, but I have a feeling it's probably a bit more. But this year alone, as of today's date, I've talked to 3,462 people. We've got a couple of, on, on the old, um, what are they called? On the side. Comments. The comments, on the comments. I'm sorry, my brain is really slow. <laughs> <laughs> Mark said, I've lost it, it's gone and scrolled up. Evening. Another topic that has no practical outcome past the interview stage. And then someone says, but we don't really want people. Now, you know, this is the thing. Yeah. There are companies out there go, oh, yeah, you know, we do this and we do that. How does it push on through the workplace? Is it followed up? Is it? It is um, with my company, not 100%. Mm. They have, I have brought up quite a lot of significant issues and they yeah. are working really hard with the um, Business Disability Forum and Microlink to make sure that it's all connected. At the moment, what happens is I take the adjustments to make sure that they can get through the interview, right? Yeah. So they can get that job, so they can show the best selves. And then when they get off of the job, there is no one of me taking mm -hmm. over that adjustment and then going right now we've got you in what do you need for the workplace before we get you into the office or working from home so it's all set up there isn't that one person yeah and it's up to the managers to do it and you know yeah. all best managers. will in the world the managers might not necessarily understand no. what disability is, no. might not understand what adjustments are, but they are trying really hard. And at the moment, they are trying to push through a what what the business like to call a fuchsia. That seems to be a term now within this global business that we're going to put a fuchsia in everywhere. And they put a fuchsia in... Um, copyright it, copyright it, logo it and copyright it now. Fuchsia. They don't look dead. More, more, more powder. Yes, yes. We're going to have a load of ghosts. I mean, going back, of ghosts floating yeah, around. Going back to um, when I could work, um, I won't mention any company names. That would be really unfair. But Olympus Key Med down the road where I worked, I would just had big knee surgery. I was on and off crutches, and we were working on endoscopes. And I got this endoscope like 30 metres long. And there's no bench. And they're like, we'll put it on the floor. So I come up with this idea. Can we have a tray that it lays in? Because I've got to keep getting down and measure these angles where you adjust it. Yeah. The, reason, the answer from the manager was, shut up, Zach, and get on with it. Hmm. See, this is the thing, is that it's really Mr. important, to, I think, to understand what a reasonable adjustment is. Yeah. And I'm yeah. sure that you, if you should find this all the time, the idea that, one, people, especially managers, seem to think, well, if we give it to one, we have to give it to all. <laughs> so, example, yeah. um, comfortable vibrating office chairs. Should be for all workers, whereas no, yeah. it's actually only for those people that need them so they can actually level the playing field. Yes. Um, and that everyone will be different. I mean, do you find that that that, that you're always trying to have to explain the same thing over and over and over again? Yeah, when I first started, yeah, there was a lot of pushback because the biggest thing that we give are the questions an hour before the interview if you've got any cognitive hmm. um, conditions. And that could be anything from mental health to medication to pain to diabetes to cancer to literally anything. And it it really helps. But I had a lot of um, managers going, well, that's unfair for everyone else. And I had to say, look, mate, <laughs> yeah. I can't read or write. I'm a visual person. If you If I rock up to an interview already feeling sick because this is so important for me to drag myself out of poverty the mm -hmm. last thing i'm going to think of is examples of when a karen went at me and i had to defuse a situation because all i'm sitting there is thinking i really need this job i really need this job my brain will then go boom and it will think yep. of everything even like yep. my you know my back of my leg itching will be more important yep. than me answering the question so I have to explain, like having the questions is not giving someone an unfair advantage. It's making mm. sure that you're going to get the best candidate for the role because they're going to be able to answer the question. <laughs> it's it's funny the number of times, because I mean, obviously I, I spent a brief time in your role kind of thing yes. um, in with Network Rail and they were really good, I think. I, I, they've 
they had a lot of stuff in place already. And that's mainly because they used to have uh, the wonderful Margaret Hickish, who is now no longer sadly with us, yeah. doing your job in an industry that, because one of the things is, I think, is that like you work in the private sector, but the yeah. public sector, again, can be really bad. I mean, we only need to hear like some of the feedback from what it's like to work at the DWP to know that. But they have an even greater legal requirement because if they have the public sector equality duty as well as the Equality Act. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because I'm just reading some of our comments. Like Mark says, oh, but it, it works from, you know, changes from company to company. And, you know, the thing is, it doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't, shouldn't. It right? shouldn't. But the idea, what reasonable, because people don't appreciate that what reasonable means under the law is what would any reasonable person expect? So if you went in and said, well, I need to have a jet plane, a helicopter, come and pick me up from my home and fly me to work every day, that probably would be unreasonable. But saying I would need a cab to bring me to work every day and how would I arrange that could be something that would be considered reasonable, especially if you in engaged access to work. Yeah. So it's sort of, you know, but yeah, the big one is, well, if we give you um, uh, like I said, a comfy chair or a special place or give you 10 minutes off an hour to lay down because your back hurts, he says, with his back fucking killing him. Um, <laughs> then, uh, uh, then, then kind of someone else will want it. And it's like, yes, but yeah. someone else doesn't need it. Exactly. Yeah. 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 And I guess it must be easy, you know, people coming in the wheelchairs, oh, look, they need reasonable adjustments, but people with invisible disabilities, it must be so much harder because the company's going... Well, what are you on about? Yeah. I mean, that, that must be the real battle. And that, that was the hardest one to push, especially with um, accessible um, programs such as Dragon, Read and Write, Grammarly, stuff like that. Mm. Um, I even had one manager once who is sadly no longer with us. <laughs> I'm oh, really sad do? about that. Um, I, I do hope you mean they left rather than they cacked it. <laughs> <laughs> No longer with them. Oh, there okay. we am. Are. Am I that They've moved on. They, they, yeah, they moved on to uh, to to a different sector. Um, they said, "Well, I mean, why should we give all this assistive technology when it's not only been around for a couple of years?" And I was like, "Right, how old do you think I am?" And he went, "Oh, about mid twenties." I was like, "No, I'm thirty seven, and Dragon has been around since I was in primary school in 1993." Yeah, and yeah. he was like, "What?" I was like, Dragon was actually created in the 1970s, as far as I believe, and it became commercial in the 1980s. Mm. And, <laughs> and he yeah, was just yeah. like, what? I was like, yeah, don't talk on things you know nothing about because now you look like a royal idiot and I'm not going to talk to thing, The other thing I've always thought is really weird is that they, they have people who are experts, like yourself, like myself, and yeah. then they argue with you. Yes. And you're like, but you're paying me to tell you what to do. It's really, really easy. Just listen yeah. and do it, right? And then you're covered and you, because then what happens is, is you end up with a situation where if some, sorry, I am in absolute agony at the moment. So sorry, folks, the old back pain's playing up and I was going to try. Well, what do you expect? You're already disabled. I know, I know. We were discussing this. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, <laughs> but, you know, the idea that, um, you know, kind of, I'm here to make it so that you don't have to think yeah. is the reason why you're there. If we, if, if all the managers did their job properly, then... <laughs> Managers and yeah, all right, okay, yeah, I see. I see the well, I, know, I, know. I do know a lot of managers who no, are very, no, no. very good, and they're constantly asking me questions on how to make things better. So, but yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, this is, you know what? This is the thing: is I don't. I always think I think it's about a lot of things around disability. I don't think people genuinely don't like us or genuinely kind of want our lives to be difficult. I just don't think they get it, no, and no. I think work is the ultimate. I mean, I know for a fact that if we hadn't have just come out of covid i would now be unemployed because i'm unable to leave the house let alone you know it's not like i can't like pop over the road for a coffee at the minute so mm. the, I, yeah, I one of the bonuses be... of covid is zoom yeah. things like that has yeah. become yeah. a yeah. normality and because i when i worked at network rail like i worked two, three days a week uh remote like at home and two days a week in the office. And that was kind of the agreement they wanted because they thought it was important for an office environment. But, right. um, you know, like now I'm 24 hours full-time 
working from home. And it was the fact that that was put in place. Do you know what? I might turn my camera for a moment and change. So uh, Zek, go, ask a sentence a question go, go while I go it. and change into a different oh, chair because yeah, this is bloody I mean, killing me. Change it's chair. normally on the settee. I mean, talking about, you know, we're hearing about all this uh, people working from home and it's brilliant. And we've mm. got the likes of Alan Sugar who is going, no, oh. we need people back in offices because he oh. owns thousands and thousands of thousands yards of, of office space and it's yep. not being used. So it's quite often about this, isn't it? Yeah. And it can cost companies money. I mean, when I worked at this place down the road, a guy who was uh, T5, I think, disabled, you know, he needed things like his chair. Obviously, when he got on it, he didn't want it. So it had the wheels had to kind of lift up and down with like a brake system so he could transfer safely. Oh, I and see. And then yeah. once he's on, undo it so he can then scoot around his workbench. And it's little things like that, isn't mm-hmm. it, that can make yeah. a massive difference to someone's life when they're working. Huge. I mean, like Lee, with my chair, I mean, it is a gaming chair and it vibrates and it can lean backwards. So I don't know if I'm going to do it and now make a tit of myself live. You're just going to go. You're just going to go. And that will be me on my own. (laughs) And I can actually lay flat and it's going to rest. So, yeah, and it only costs them 150 quid, but it's far more supportive than a normal office chair. And I can sit in this for hours and not be in my wheelchair. And it's on wheels, so then if I want to go and make a cup of tea and I don't want to get into my wheelchair or walk, I just push myself away, you know? Just and the just vibration like... before you come back with your cup of tea. <laughs> <laughs> like they're scooting around my flat. But, <laughs> I mean, my question is, how far do reasonable adjustments go before a company says, it's just not, what? what is oh. there? Because reasonable adjustments is pretty open, isn't it? Yes. For them to interpret. I think when it comes to money, there is no limit because we do have access to work. And I think the personal allowance on that is 5,000 a year. Right. From what I can remember, I don't know if it's gone down or up, but I know I use my entire budget to get a brand new wheelchair that's Mm. carbon fibre for me to travel to London with because it's easier to get in and out of taxis. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, And around the office as well um, because, you know, I've got dainty little wrists. (laughs) You're not built like a barn door like we are. <laughs> Oi! I'm tiny! And with my, with my broken, gimpy arm, my <laughs> wrist, it's a... Uh, yeah. <laughs> but people are like, oh, why didn't you get an electric chair? And I think that's where the budget is, because they're £30,000, and I don't think mm. people realise that. I think also people don't appreciate that if you don't need... I mean, this is an argument I have a lot with people. If you don't need a power chair, what happens is is the rest of your body wastes. Like yeah, a power chair for someone one. that can't use their arms or has trouble wheeling or whatever makes yeah. sense. But if and you've got the ability, and pure yeah, yeah. size and weight of these things for someone like me, six yeah. foot four and fat yeah. as hell, yeah, you'd it need would to drive a, a tank. Of a yeah, it Imagine. would be a World War Two <laughs> tank. <laughs> it would be, be one of those. Use chair just sat on the turret. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be tank girl. Yes. Why sorry, I sorry. I, I am. I, I am a bat, but I will admit, I am. I didn't realize how much lower my wife's work chair was. <laughs> That's why I did. I'm trying to be professional here, guys, and I'm crying. Oh. So, hold on. We're not, so, we're never so the world has shrunk. I, 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 you, about all of my screens are set up wrong, so everybody's got a weird colour and everything. So I, I, I popped it. I popped in when you were saying about what is reasonable. See, I think the problem is, is that there's so much focus on money. Yeah. Right. It drives me up the wall because actually, so much can be done that costs nothing. Or peanuts, That's and one of the I big do. ones. One, of the, yeah, one of the big ones I always say to people is one of the simplest ways to create a happy workplace is to not have workers that have to stick to their job descriptions. Have flexibility within that, and say to someone like I, I used to work with people that were really, really good at detail, but really, really bad with people. And as we know, I'm quite good with people, but probably not so good with detail. So if we work together. I can handle their people bit and they can handle my um, sort of detail bit or, you know, what do you mean? And you, yeah, you see, I, I, like, this... I liked the work. I didn't like the people. <laughs> it's, well, <laughs> without being me. funny. Yeah. I mean, I've met loads of people that, that have trouble with people and offices and finding it all very yeah. difficult. And they would, um, in fact, you know, where I work, there's someone who's really f- detail focused and they work on a lot of the detail that fab needs. 
you know what I mean? So, you know, there's a lot of stuff to do when you're running a charity to do with detailed DBS checks and safeguarding and stuff. And they're brilliant at that. Yeah. Right? I mean, you know, they're fun, you know, fun person that, but they prefer to do that. And then, you know, other people go out and, and meet people. And that's, to me, that's the easiest one. I would also question the idea that when the wheelchair comes in, everyone goes, oh, well, that's ever so easy. We know what to do there. Because yeah. I've personally found that one of the big ones, and I bet you have this with all of the people that you work with, is if someone has a, a non-visible impairment, something you can't see, they are reticent to declare it. Oh, so they work and they work under terrible conditions. To try and get them to listen yeah. to me. And, you know, I... I'm very open about my mm. disabilities, as I keep mm. saying to everyone, and it's, it's up a few in the disabled community, but I like to collect disabilities like Pokemon cards, <laughs> right? Every time I go to the doctor, they give me a new disability to have. And, uh, <laughs> and I'm just sitting here with a list going, you know what, um, can we just stop at five now? That's that's enough. Thanks. Yeah. I need oh. my other hand to count with. So I wouldn't we... pass that. Do you know what? I, what was it? It was about... <laughs> It was about 10 years ago, so I've added a load more since then. I went in to see – oh, that was – oh, I went to do one of these awful things that men have to do at a certain age, which is a flow test to see how much you can pee to make sure that your prostate is all you're right. You've already had the finger. but it, um, <laughs> I, I once had a finger um, – when I went in to see a doctor saying my back doesn't feel right and he rammed his hand up there and I came out and said to my wife I don't think I'm not sure if I've not been assaulted because he didn't <laughs> warn me he just rolled me over and stuck a side I finger had that once. and it was like yeah. but what's that going to do with my back I now know what it was but it was yeah. very strange I, I but, was laid on, on on a trolley and this young gorgeous young female doctor come in high oh, sort of slow motion and she stuck her finger up my bum and said does that feel normal? And I said, to be honest, no, we, we don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Does that feel normal? I don't know. You'll have to do it some more before They're I They're checking find muscle, out. aren't they? they? But they don't no, say, they do I'm it. checking the muscles. Does this they feel do normal? Me. <clears throat> they do it to me. Every time my back goes into spasm, I go into A&E, they shove a finger up there and go, can you squeeze? I'm like, no, I'm in too much bloody pain. And then I go into spasm and I clench on their finger. And I'm like, well, I told you not to put it up there, didn't I? It's glad to see you home. Is that doctor still with you? <laughs> Why are they obsessed now, with the Now, this thing, is, I I think think this, this thing is, is, I, I do wonder if this is too much information. We have gone into a point, okay, <laughs> where, where we may have ventured into almost foxes making love kind of problems. But we won't <laughs> carry on any more than that. Um, <laughs> oh, God, yeah, making love. That's all right. Don't worry about it. It's all right. just, yeah, that's just my own dirty me. mind. But anyway, I, no. I, you know like what? I was, he does at night. He's out looking at the foxes. That's it. <laughs> oh, you've, until you've lived next door to a, a, yeah. a fox den. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, the first time, the first night, you wake up and go, "Who's killing that baby?" Yeah. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and, then you and then you eventually realise that. Basically, it's a male fox desperately well, you trying. You should try badgers because we've got a badger's den near me. You should try a fox. <laughs> try a badger. <laughs> you know, a badger. <laughs> hey, nice First time I heard a fox scream. Right, I'm going to take my coat. Bye. <laughs> I was the, the worst bit is you're, you're desperately hoping that your entire <laughs> professional career is ruined by this 45 minute appearance. Oh, it started oh. off being so brilliant, and it's really the late 80s. Man, I turned my camera off for five minutes. And in the late happened? 80s, I worked for the MOD, and I used to take the red flags down once everyone stopped firing. It was pitch black out on Fairness Island. And I'm in a Land Rover, and I get out and I walk to this flag, and I heard that scream, and I swear I wet myself a little bit. <laughs> yeah. How have we gone right. to foxes? Uh, we won't go into that. We'll move on. Um, but so, so basically, remind, going back to my my Badgers. my hospital thing, the 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 nurse that was doing this test that was in fact in a complete nightmare because she filled me up and then said, "Could you now stand?" And I went, "Uh, did you not see the wheelchair?" Uh, so that was the end of that. But she got up my notes and the thing, the list of things I have took two double rows of an A4 page, and I was like, "I don't feel that shit." <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And, you do and now. Yeah, when you wheel in, but when no, what I mean is now it's probably three. But when you yeah. wheel in, they look at all that and they go, "How? Hardly, it's hardly worth bothering, is it? Really? How are you yeah, alive? This still alive? <laughs> this person is just a stack of skin You're and bone, a... waiting to rot. It's no, the one for me is... will that's keeping them alive. Hospitals. Oh. Sorry, we can only do a chest X-ray if you stand up. Yeah. 
Oh, have you, have, have, have any, any of you with problems walking ever had a barium meal? Yes. A what? Well, I had one and they gave me it and then told me I'd need to stand up for 40 minutes while they x-rayed its transit through my digestive Oh track. no, they just rolled me went, round and round. Um, no, and so what they did was they laid me on a table. They they sit you up on a table that you just sit on with legs. You just stand there and it's easy. But for me, I had to hold on to two handles, right, for 45 minutes, holding myself upright. And it was like, I really hope. And the, <laughs> so, so by the end, I was like, well, I don't care what it is. Uh, <laughs> I'm yeah. never doing that again. I just say the barium mill for me, that wasn't the problem, the test. It was when the barium came out. Oh, yes, yes. But that's another thing <laughs> that we won't talk about. <laughs> the last thing Over after talking toilet. about anal spasms, the last thing you want to talk about is that barium is a metal. It's a form of metal that they can then X-ray going through your system. Yes, You've drunk it, and when it comes out, my wife was downstairs and she went, "What was that bang?" <laughs> like a gas explosion. Get me a bucket of water. I need a bucket of water. Now this. Welcome see, to I'm DHTV. TV. We are it's live. Serious and deep conversation all the time. Reasonable adjustments. Right. Now, but you see, this, you see, is the problem, I think, is that when you go into an employment situation, like that, we've just had an example of disability culture, I feel, yeah. right? Mm. But when you go into a, a work cut, they're so scared of saying the wrong thing and oh, doing God, the wrong thing. Yeah. But it, para- it, it, using a term that we shouldn't really use, paralyzes them. But it does. Yeah. they like, ooh. And so they, they almost do the wrong thing. Something. Yeah, Because it's do. the only thing they can think of to do. <laughs> Because they know they shouldn't. You know when, you know when your brain goes, "Don't say that, don't say that," and yeah. because you're saying it to yourself so much, you say it, say it. and then realise if only I hadn't thought of it, I wouldn't have said it. To me, <laughs> that's what, what happens in a lot. workplaces. You don't realise till you start looking at the small problems in a workplace mm. that cause issues. Things like a self flush toilet. I sit on the toilet. I don't can't sit upright. I, I tend to flop back. It flushes the toilet. <laughs> I'm fifty odd years of age, so I get a cold wash on my balls. It's just little things like that. that Saying that, that the infrared infrared toilets are equally bad because yeah. unlike everybody else, we 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 don't stand up to wipe, so we no. do that. You At which point it flushes, it, it flushes, everything. and then you're like, oh no, I've got to. Yeah. yeah it's, but but although having said that, don't whatever you do, get yourself one of those washy toilets that that washes you. Because I had one when I first moved to London. The flat I lived in <laughs> uh, uh, had one in already. Uh, and it was turned off, and I couldn't work out why. And then I discovered that the reason why is because most men that had been there before had used the little hot air dryer bit as a place to aim their wee. So decades oh, of stale no. urine. Oh, no, <laughs> so no. when you turned on the fan, it made the whole house stick Mick like got a, sprayed. <laughs> like a rank uh, oh. men's toilet. So anyway. Uh, and, Talking and of toilets, why do all hospitals have bloody... Pedal bins in the disabled toilet. Yes, that drives me what insane. What the fucking what are you doing there? And bringing it back <laughs> to, to what pop we're my wheels about. up and do it. <laughs> but bringing about to what we're talking about, that is the easiest of reasonable adjustment. And yes. I will point out, I have recently been into hospitals, and I look and I go, it's got a bloody pedal bin. And then I noticed that on the top of the pedal bin, someone had stuck a little bendy bit of metal, so you can lift it with your finger. Nice. And that's the answer. But see, that's a reasonable adjustment. Rather than yeah. saying you've got to get rid of all your bins, thousands, hundreds Just of thousands of pounds. Handle. Little little handle. Little that's I mean brilliant. basically, basically like he says, using an old USB code. A thing like that. So it's stuck yeah. on there, and then you just put your finger on there and lift it up. Obviously, not that because bendy. Uh, anyway, that's enough about my trousers. So uh yes. Um <laughs> Oh, Avril said, why don't UK rail companies allow employees with epilepsy? They do, but not on trackside. There is a whole pile of issues, safety issues, that the rail industry has that mean that they are allowed legally to discriminate. So, for example, I could work at Network Rail, but I could not work on the track because I could not be guaranteed to be it safe. Out if, wide enough. Yeah, well, I mean, one, you know, where it's would the I wrong work? Gauge. <laughs> but it's the wrong gauge. But it's... It, it's yeah, <laughs> we all get back in black and white movies. <laughs> But but so so that's why so that's why they're allowed to do that, and there are a lot yeah. of safety critical jobs in in the world that you can't yes. do. Um, they are getting less, um, and one of the big ones is train drivers. You yeah. couldn't be a train driver if you had color blindness or color vision loss. But they've changed that now because they realised doing tests because they were always a proactive industry that if 
you know, we think red, green, colorblind, but actually the red and green neon lights that they now use have another shade in them. The green is slightly turquoise and the red has a pink. So actually they show up as one's gray and one's slightly turquoise so they can see the difference. So now you can drive a train if you are colorblind. And wow. there you go. And there's all things like that going on. And one day we'll all be able to do everything because we'll all have robot bodies. Anyway, that's just my own dream. Of them. <laughs> <laughs> I've been wanting a robot body for you. When I was a kid, I used to dream of a robot body, but now I've, that's it. I'm up for it. I want to be on the guy of the wild, wild west. Like, Mr. Like... Musk, if you're watching, it's doubtful, yeah. but you never know. Um, if you're thinking of experimenting on humans with a robot body, he I'm, is up experimenting for the first on humans. I'm up He's for the Twitter. first go. I want to be Robocop. Come quietly or there'll be trouble. What I People said that to me. Why didn't I stay in the police? I was like, how, how many frontline police officers have you seen in a wheelchair? Mate, hmm. I could run like the bloody wind. Can't yeah. push myself a hit in a wheelchair. <laughs> <laughs> and when I do, I break my arm. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> now, so, yes, we're talking, we've done, that's a sensible bit. How we, we was like half an hour of sensible? Well, sure. well, sensible ish. There was a, the TV program on, and they, one of the detectives actually was in a wheelchair. In the oh yeah, you, you could be a detective, but I didn't didn't want to be one. No, no. no. yes, well, they won't yes. put hand control. I mean, in a, I mean, the thing the thing is, vehicle. I mean, that was Silent Witness, wasn't it? Where where they'd kind of gone a bit. Hey, let's have all the disabled people in one episode. No, no, this <laughs> was actually about. Um, 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 uh, it's the Met. Was it? Yeah, this guy. Yeah. Was it? yeah. Oh, so a real, a real detective. A real, yeah, a real detective. A real detective. A real detective. Really detective. See, detective. Something I'm interested in, and this brings us back to this loop, in a way, almost back to what we're talking about. Were they disabled when they joined? No. Or did they become no, disabled? No, and there you go. And that's was, a big one. Because that's a big like one. Me, I think. He became... Um, yeah, I think he was injured in the line of duty. Not, yeah. the, not the program. Yeah. Yeah, no. <laughs> it was an extra... Oh, he but was see, frontline it. and then he became a detective. He took yeah. his detective because you do have to pass a test yeah. to become a detective, yeah. but he did it. So. so that's it. See, this is, I think there's lots of stuff out there that we could do. And one of the things that proves it is the fact that now it is less acceptable to go, well, thank you very much for your service. Now you're a disabled person. I go off. Like so that... did me. Go on oh. gardening leave, have your pension. Bye. You know, ah, take, but, take but look at you now. Look at you in now. The war on Sarah. I mean, think, leading the world for a better place, as I always I think say to you. There was an American, uh, I think he was a Navy SEAL, actually went back to frontline duty with pro a prosthetic limb, didn't he? I think well, he like, got his leg good. blown off with an IED, right. and he yeah. rehabbed and went back out. Well, be all right if, if, he, if he stands on an IED with the same leg. Well, do you know, I most of them, another one. No, the big question, you know most of them weren't bothered about losing the leg. The question they all asked, apparently, when they come mm. around was, I mean, yes. it's still there. Well, that being funny, having spent time in the spinal ward, that's the question that everyone asks. Does it still yeah. work? It's, Does it's, it still work? Yeah. Does it? And, yeah. and, and that's why I do a lot of work in that respect, telling people that even if it doesn't, you can still have fun. But anyway, <laughs> we've got loads of great comments. People are really talking. It's funny how much this engages. And Ka do you know what, Katie? Hello, Katie. Katie, I think I agree that one of the things is now Katie is, would be a wonderful employee. I have worked with Katie when she was... Um, supporting young disabled people to get into the workplace. And she was a star. Um, yeah. And I know that one of the problems is I can, I know, knowing her, I know that she'll be nervous before the interview. She needs all that kind of support. She needs yeah, information yeah. and she needs understanding that, you know, <laughs> preconceptions are rubbish. Did anyone see on Facebook recently, someone posted about their daughter who has Down syndrome and has just finished her master's in photography and fine art. And it's like, there, take that expectations. Yeah. Because I think, and this is something I'm doing with a lot of my work, is we need to blow those out of the water. Forget what you think someone can do, but yeah. you give them the chance to exceed excel. It's all about fulfilling their potential. And that can be done by reasonable adjustments, by getting rid of expectation, and by accepting that, Disabled employees are very, very good people to employ. Oh, yes. And she said something about clothes as well. I mean, we were going to mention my clothes, weren't we? So that might be a really good thing because <laughs> yes. Katie just said, um, uncomfortable yeah, wearing I'm... smart clothes due to anxiety. Yep. Well, I don't wear suits, even though I'm in a suit world. The, the suitists of suit worlds. We're talking about the, the Louis Vuitton. Well, hang on, they're shoes, yeah. aren't they? 
whatever suits are these days. Yes, not, I don't you know, know. Boss, like that. boss Armani. Armani. I don't know. The, yeah, I that, see a lot. Those, of, were the, those were the suits when I was young. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what I they are now. They're probably quite young. <laughs> Top shop. Um, Mr. Buy, right? Yes. <laughs> but I, I can't. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Sorry. Obviously, I did actually go for I went for my first interview in a silver lame Mr. Byright Bolero oh, jacket nice. and tie with an electric blue uh, shirt, an electric blue tie and yeah. bright orange hair, almost in my I want to be Nick Rhodes phase. And this was for a job in the tax office. And three of the greyest men you have ever seen were sitting opposite me as I wheeled in. And they all went. Huh? Uh, it was like... What the fuck is this? We've got we've got to do an interview. There's no way this man is going to work here. And I thought, yeah, very cleverly, that because my mum wanted me to work there because she said, as a wheelchair user, working in an office would be perfect, and the tax office would be a job for life. So I picked out an outfit that would never get me the job. So, <laughs> <laughs> but you are. I mean, do you know what though? This idea of 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 about clothes because when yeah. I was working at Network Rail, the one big problem I had was I dressed like me, all in black yeah. and kind of. And I kept getting stopped, not by the security on the front desk that knew me. We had a great relationship because up the workers, but fellow staff that would come over and go, um, are you meant to be in this area? I get that all the <laughs> I'd time. I'd get out my, my staff lanyard and go, yeah. yes. And they'd be I like, oh. You. And you could see they were going, not dressed like. And, and it's really weird how there's a uniform. Everybody in the war, yeah. either, all men wore either a bright, a baby blue or a baby pink shirt yeah. and jeans and brown shoes. That was it. Because it was not not dressy. It wasn't smart. Also, yeah, it it's smart not dressy casual. in your industry. Yeah, that's yeah. it. So, yeah, in your industry, it's all like, woohoo. It's like still ties and, yeah. And yeah. the first day I turned up, I actually even turned up in my bonnet because I was like, nope, I'm going to wear my best Regency dress, my best stays. For those who don't know, I don't wear oh. modern clothes. Nope. I wear Regency clothes, which I've made myself. So... Some of them are brilliant. The body. I don't know if you can see it, but I'm wearing a Regency dress and shirt. The sleeves, the sleeves there, they are Lawrence really? Llewellyn Bowen. Look at that. <laughs> and so I turned up with my straw bonnet, with my ribbons, my best Regency dress, my best Spencer, which is like a short top, because I wear Regency clothes because they don't cut into my waist. They're completely yeah. free flowing from under the boobs yeah. down, and it yeah. can hide a multitude of sins. Yeah. It's incredibly comfortable. I can move. Free and easy. I can move my wheelchair. If I fall over, I'm not going to get restricted. I can just get up and go again. But anyway, yeah. So first day in, oh, I don't want to say where it is in London. No, just, it's be just, a huge just say first day somewhere. somewhere in the capital somewhere city. Somewhere in London. <laughs> there I was, got out my car, got up, uh, got into the lift, got into the lobby, massive, great big lobby, loads of people milling around. There I was in my bonnet with my laptop in my bag, wheeling into security <laughs> and the security with my lanyard, with the security officer going, um, are you in the right building? This is a- you in the right century. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, yes, I work here it's on- It's the, the right building. I've just traveled through time, doctor. <laughs> <laughs> What's happened? <laughs> there I was, milking and, and, be, and saying hello to Mr. Darcy. Next yes. thing you know, I'm, I'm here in this glass box. fine, sir. <laughs> Talk about glass ceilings. Did you drop your gloves? <laughs> and I went up to my floor and no one had met me. And at that time, it was pre-COVID, right? So it was mm. packed. Like, there mm. were people, like, sitting on top of each other. I mean, I was crammed in between my boss mm. and <laughs> someone I'd never met before. And I was, like, literally like this. And, I, you know, when you can start smelling BO, you know you're too close to someone, right? And with my autism, it's just like, whoa, too much. Yep, and I yep. put my bonnet off. And then I just thought, oh, crap. There's no fucking place to put my bonnet. Oh, Where reasonable my adjustment. My <laughs> Where's my bonnet holder? I asked for a bonnet holder. <laughs> wasn't a reasonable adjustment to have a coat no. hanger. <laughs> you allowed me to tie my horse up, but there's no yes. holder, sir. I, I, I brought my <laughs> horse and cart in. My manservant is waiting for me downstairs. My horse and... yeah, with... Where, where <laughs> shall I hang my, my, my bonnet? Verily. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry, that's the wrong era again. I didn't talk like that, but no, 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 no that wasn't I don't know how would that more... anyway. It's more Shakespearean, well. isn't it? I had to hang it off the back of my wheelchair, but I had to keep checking that I hadn't dropped it so no one stepped on it and crashed it. That's it. it. A you lot know what, of dress for comfort, you know, you know. Yeah. Do, but a lot, you know, it's funny because when I, I did have a phase and this, I was at a, a conference about access. I had a phase. Newsflash, um, Mick had a phase. 
Um, and I did a speech and a guy came up to me afterwards and said, it was a really good speech, but you don't think anyone's going to take any notice of you looking like that, do you? And so I went through a phase of having much short hair and dressing in shirts and sensible stuff. I was working in the uh, architecture industry. So I did kind of do a little bit like, you know, roll neck jumper and little pebble glasses and i tried to do the whole thing to buy into it i can't imagine like, that I, it's always the sad thing is i always do dressing normally like i'm dressing up to go to a fancy dress because i don't <laughs> get it so it really doesn't work and then one day i was doing this and i thought i work in inclusion and, and equality yeah so why am I conforming to a norm when I'm telling everyone not to do a norm? So then I just went back to dressing the way I am. And if anyone ever says anything, I go, oh, yes, but I'm working in equality. And of course, choice yeah. of clothes could also be a religious or a cultural thing, uh, as well as the fact that surely what I wear is not going to impact on my performance. Yes. Even when I went for my award, my industry award, mm. I made a special Sith dress. And for those who don't know, I'm obsessed ah, with that's, oh, We've only got five minutes. But I really want to get onto oh, this. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh. I can't even show my new one because I'm, yeah. No, but, but, but yeah, so, so as well as being super, because I mean, before we leave this, one of the things I think is really important is that there are lots of people out there who are not working that are disabled. And yeah. we are living in a more and more judgmental society that kind of goes, and all the benefits are being, yeah. and what annoys me is that many of, I mean, I'm working from home, dosed off my tits on antidepressants because it will stop my pain. And I'm doing, I'm holding a job lovely. So you can work, but the workplace does not let you in. And I was speaking to a friend of mine that publishes magazines from her bed. And she used to work in publishing. She's got ill. She can't do that anymore. So she still publishes from her bed. So there is something we can do, but the workplace demands a set thing. And people like Alan Sugar, go in the office, go in the office. Yeah, we were talking you about don't own that an office. Or, you don't own an office, office or two, space. do you? Uh, exactly. All this office space. Yeah. But so, so one day, people see future, and people like her are pushing so that one day the world will be more inclusive and accessible, and that will mean you can work if you can. And you are accepted if you can't. But of course, the other side of our wonderful future is, but she is a Sith. She's a now, Sith. anyone that knows anything about Star Wars knows that they're the baddies. <laughs> so, yes, they are. I they're made a baddies. lightsaber hilt out my old, when I from I worked on the aircraft, my old uh, maglite, and I mm. turned it into a lightsaber. No, I haven't got the blade, couldn't do that. Taking it all apart, cut it apart. And it's red. It's red. That is so cool. See, I have a purple one, like Samuel L. Jackson. I I have a green one, and it's in the cupboard over there, along it's with not my a replica, along with my anything. blaster. It's just mine. <laughs> yeah, I, I made. Should've, I should have got out. Wait, if you can see mine, I should have lit it up. There's mine. Uh, uh, he's off. He's off. One minute. He's off. Yeah, I I, I won't. Yeah, yeah I'm myself. not going to go. <laughs> see, go. I even but... have a blade that's long enough to use in a wheelchair. Hang on, I'm going to have to get it now, aren't I? So, so it's anyway, a everybody. Blade. So I can use it in a wheelchair. Oh, oh, that's one of those nice ones. I've got one of the original ones when they first bought not the not the original originals. I got one of them when I was thirteen on my thirteenth birthday. Yeah, and it was it was a torch with a tube on the top. And we soon learned that if you took the little round cover off the top and then sliced them sideways, you ended yeah. up being able to take people's eyes out. It was great. <laughs> you ended up covered in there we go. Yeah. Totally not finished yet. Oh but it's made God. from all sorts of bits. And it, it glows red, and it's even got a crystal mm. chamber. You can't really see it, but there's a oh, crystal. Oh, okay. Yours is far fancier than my. But yeah, it was an old meg like torch. But yours is fancier than mine. Up. My mine is in a cupboard over there, and I can't be bothered to get it <laughs> because I can't afford to buy one. So I made one out of the shit I had. <laughs> <laughs> but so, so what is it that draws you to the dark side? Because. <laughs> <laughs> As if doing that was brilliant. You led right forward into your light and it just looked really spooky. That was brilliant. <laughs> well. Society draws you to the dark side. What is it about the dark side? Well, for a fact that they can shag. So that was a big thing. <laughs> they can have sex. I don't think I watched I that don't remember, I don't remember that element of Star Wars where they were. That wasn't oh, in A New Hope, was it? Hang on. That, I missed a bit. This must have where, been the Where was this mentioned? Where, 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 I mean, I, mean, I don't even in the crap three, there wasn't any mention of the fact they couldn't you know, get it on. I mean, didn't Luke spend half the time thinking he was going to hit Leia until he found out she? Was <laughs> you know what I mean? So when, 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 when? Is that one where Chewbacca oh. got hold of Palpatine? <laughs> <laughs> I'm intrigued at this now. I'm going to go away. I'm and have to confused. Look into my, yeah, so my the Star Jedi Wars like lore. Months. 
Jedi yes. are not meant to have any attachments, um, physical or otherwise. So they're not even really meant to have attachments to their Padawans. So Obi Wan no. broke the code by falling in love with Anakin, and that drew um, him to the dark side. And then it's it, yeah. Um, I I think that here what we're discovering is that um, Zek and myself don't know anything about Star Wars. Hey, excuse me, because I had no idea that there was a homosexual <laughs> love plot between. Well, uh, between, is know. it? I mean, is it, it would have made. Love? To be honest, it would have made the first, the middle three better. <laughs> They were truly unwatchable, um, <laughs> in my opinion. Um, the last three were basically the first three remade with... Do, can I, does anyone... You know the last one? The, 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 the end of the nine? The one yeah. where the... Do, right. Did anyone notice that the, the bad, evil, bad, nasty person, emperor person... Right? Yeah. Yes. Could destroy ships from his chair with yeah. his mind. So yeah. the entire nine films was bloody pointless. He didn't <laughs> need a Death Star on a shooty ray gun planet. He could have just sat there in his chair and gone, <laughs> and everyone would have died. Oh, you're yeah, the sort of person that Star picks Wars apart the been, Bible and says it's nonsense. <laughs> Star Wars would have been basically a very nasty man sitting on a chair going, I'll show you, you get... <laughs> And they'd all just drop down dead, and that'd be the end of it. And because his power the, grows. It grows. Growing. The more disabled he gets, the more powerful he growing. gets. It's an origin like story. It's all in your mind. Makes no sense to me. I mean, you know, it, <laughs> the first three at least Give in, I, Give I in. saw as a child, and it was life changing. The yeah. second three, I saw the first one in the cinema and spat my chips out because I thought, <laughs> good God, who on earth thought that Jar Jar Binks was something that we needed? And all then we saw the remastered versions with all of the Muppets that had been added, all the little weird creatures that weren't in the originals. Shall and I then remove the him one. from the screen? I do so apologise for this insulting barrage. I love Star Wars, but I still didn't get it. And I didn't... I'm just I love the spin-off. We were I going the along. The series. I we were no, going... I'm not, going. I'm not allowed to have Disney. My <laughs> I've, I've got, I've got My Prime got and I've got Netflix and we've got Sky and Diana said, you're not having Disney as well. We're meant to be tightening our belts at this time. <laughs> my do my not, daughter has not Disney adding another load of telly. I have a login for Disney, so I, I watch what's the latest oh, cool. one? Um, out, um, oh, I've got, I've got the name. Andor. Of the latest, Andor. 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 Oh, it's Andor. Amazing. They're brilliant. Mm. But you kind of go from the last one, Obi-Wan, where he could have killed Vader, but he let him walk. And you're like, you could have saved all of that. But, it's it's a, but the other problem, of course, and, and this also annoys me, the timing. So in the end of the first three, you take the helmet off Darth Vader. And what is he? He's a man older than me. But then you go no. and find out that Luke is his baby and he was this little kid. I mean, he only had him when he was about 18. So therefore, Darth Vader was approximately, th was, it was probably Fuchsia's age. So when yeah. you took the helmet off and this granddad smiled out at them, it's like, <laughs> and, 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 you know and, not, and he you says in that film, I became, I became like <laughs> this <laughs> over <laughs> time as the evil of the dark side took me. And he was burnt like, to absolute crap. His lips is <laughs> burned <laughs> off and you're worried about his looks at his age. Oh, it's, reasonable not like, adjustments. it's not it's like, reasonable it's adjustments. Not, I'm sorry. It's not like, right, that he, he didn't judging. say, he didn't say, well, son, I fell into some volcano. I, I fell into some molten lava, and that's why I became this. He said it happened to me over time. And, he, and then, then, then in the crack well, three, he kind of tripped over, over and burnt all his limbs off. And it's like, <laughs> you tripped? Did you not watch? You are ruining the plot. I do apologise if we've had any Star Wars fans here. We've just totally lost them. Even Katie, no, if, she likes no, Star no, no. Wars. If you gone. haven't seen Star Wars, then you won't know what we're talking I about. He personally but, attacked. But, but, <laughs> he tripped <laughs> into some lava. That's the end of the film. <laughs> Did. It's not like it happened over time, about 3.6 seconds as my arms and legs burnt off. It's like, it makes no sense. And the best bit was the, 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 like the, the pre the pre three before the three that were the three that we saw, I saw as a child, right? Were made by the same guy. He hasn't even got the excuse, oh, I didn't see the originals. He bloody wrote the originals. So it's like. Hang on, hang on, anyway. hang on, hang on, hang on. You sure? You, are you confused? I mean, it no, she knows what I'm talking about. No, it makes sense to me. Yes, exactly. And that's why what I, too, exactly? But, but that's why I, too, am a Sith. 
because I yeah. too can see the flaws and I'm pointing out flaws in the law of something that leads to us being something. And I like to think, read the book, mate. I, just I like read to think book. I'm a Jedi. The only thing <laughs> I don't the books like were about... written after the film. The only thing it's... I don't like about the Empire is their Nazi-like soldiers. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, that's that's a horrible thing. Yeah. Well, the, the, the spacesuits are good. It's the ones the ones that are higher up. One, when they're like Grand Moff Tarkin. <laughs> Which the, uh, the Jack which is the name I've always loved. Here comes <laughs> Grand Moff Tarkin. Oh, dear. He, he anyway. was defeated when he flew into a light one night. Yes, it. <laughs> so that was, I've got to admit, one of the better shows we've done. We've, we're, we're on a roll at the moment, aren't we, folks? We've had Nabil, and Nabil was doing weird things with biscuits and stuff, and that was great. And now we've had future was that enough? it was a game of two halves. We had sensible. And then it wasn't. They mixed and... the whole series of classic films. <laughs> I haven't. Trashed I had them. a whole spiel ready to go. Ready. Go for it. Go well, for then it. Go no, for it. Care. Because that's part? how we can we can end the show with you explaining okay. the, the drawer of the dark side. Whoa. What you want me? <laughs> drawer of the dark side. Well, I th- I like to think reasonable adjustments is like the Empire trying to drag crap out of nothing, right? For you to need adjustments, you have to tell someone you need adjustments. Yes, nine times out of ten, you're going to get a company go, we can't do that, but don't give up. Give them a reason why it's going to be good for them. Don't take it. So I always say, oh, well, if I need this or that, it's because I can then work between these hours and these hours when I'm most productive and you're going to get the most out of me. So I always say spin it into a positive. Um and that's what the SIF do. <laughs> they, they, spin, they spin it I into mean, a negative. Dove, I think you'll find you can get that giant planet destroying starships are bad. Right? They are bad, yeah. but they were all flat and they all had lifts and they all had rails and ramps. They were the most accessible yeah. starships ever. You are, you, and Anakin, seen, despite I, all his disabilities, rose to the top of the exactly. chain. Exactly. And I'd also never thought of that, that, that there you are clumping around in some desert, being some, you know, Obi-Wan. Oh, I haven't heard that name for a very long time. Very long time. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, and yet you go on the, on the old Death Star and all the starships and they're all great. Oh, well, that's it. it. I'm, I'm sorry. I also, don't know. More nicer I don't know why. When he was nasty, injured, but, why didn't mm. he just retire and go into pod racing? What he loved the most. I mean, yeah. yeah. That's it. We could have done. Money, could have done it. Yeah. And, with that, I suppose we should draw it to a close. And we're having you back, Fuchsia, that's for sure, because this has been the best fun we've had for ages. I think right. you, get, you get the HD. In fact, I think we should say that Fuchsia should join us uh, as um, one of our team of presenters, because whenever I'm not available, I think you and Zek would get on very well and <laughs> make much more sense than I do. Um, so, and I think what, she, what Fuchsia said at the end was right. When you go to an employer, you aren't asking for them to do something special. You're asking for them to do something so you can be the best employee that they want. Yeah. You are the best candidate. And I saw that Katie, you know, was saying about trying to, you know, I will definitely write you a letter, Katie. So uh, DM me on something and I will sort that out. Um, and, you know, we all have skills that we could bring to bear for the workplace, especially yeah. at the moment where they keep moaning there's not enough staff. Well, here we oh, are. Exactly. Sitting, waiting, lovely. So there you go. Stuff. We did it. We brought it round from sensible to bizarre to making no sense at all. I think it turned off between the lot. And then we back. It's like a circle. It's like the force was strong in us. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. I'm done. After totally trouncing the whole series, he does that. Yeah, that's yeah. Star and Wars. Now, yeah. See, no, it's not Star Wars. See, convinced, totally convinced. See, that is. Uh, well, actually, I used to wear it because it was used to be like ZZ Sputnik and all that. But uh, uh, it's also pretty good if you want to go out and be like a killer on Halloween. <laughs> but uh, I also wear it to all my job interviews. No, I don't. <laughs> anyway, with that. I suppose we ought to go. God, the meds Aww. have got to be too quick. Yeah, How much meds is he on? Yes, we're going to go now. We will see you in a fortnight. Oh, yes, of course. Where we're talking yes. about... Something. We haven't, we haven't arranged that We're talking about yet. something. Believe me, 
we're going to start on the topic and we're going to go way off yeah. the subject. I can guarantee yeah. you that. And Fuchsia will be back where oh, we well. may have a whole show dedicated to whether or not Star Wars is an example of reasonable adjustment or not. Disability in I, the Empire. That's oh. it. That's it. No, in a land <laughs> long, long ago in a land, galaxy far, far away, reasonable adjustment had been embedded perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> Even in the most evil empire ever created. <laughs> you could work your way up to any position, even Darth, Darth Scarlet, Darth Richardson, Darth Carter. I can see it now. Even though there's only meant to be two of them. But anyway, we're going to that. Um, yeah, we won't. Let's not go into the rule of two right yeah, now. As Zex so rightly pointed out, I am heavily medicated at the moment. In fact, I took a shit ton before I came on that, which is why this has made so little sense. I've just been sipping wine. I don't know if that was allowed. That's but a I very like... wide move. Do you know what? The other day, I actually <laughs> took one of my antidepressants and then took uh, a drink of a uh, whole glass of wine. <laughs> And then I couldn't move for the rest of the night. I just sat pain free, I would add. But also, so, did you wake up? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to right. go now for one we're reason, and that is that the Strictly results are on soon. And yes. you know me, I'm a big Strictly tart. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go now because I know Mick's going to talk after, and I've got to escape into the lounge. Yeah, no, cool. We're going to go. Yeah. Right then. So bye bye, everybody. <laughs> lovely, lovely, lovely. See you all again soon. <laughs> bye bye. You shall. It's been a pleasure. Bye, bye. everybody. Bye.